uh, explore, research, write, ideate, and share my experiences across various pl platforms. So that's about me. That's about what I do. Uh, moving forward to the main topic of our discussion today, art integrated learning. So to reorient, uh, you know, let, let us uh, quickly, you know, this was about me. Yeah, so to reorient this process, uh, to reorient the existing school education system, CBSC has issued a couple of circulars with respect to this particular introduction of the topic. This was in year 2020. Uh, as per this circular dated 18 January 2020, followed by another one in uh, uh, you know, year 2020 only, sometime in May. Uh, for uh, you know, they have laid focus on a topic called a word called art integrated learning. It becomes mandatory from classes one to ten for the next academic session to introduce this concept. So now we are in 2022. So we are all adaptive to it. We are understanding that we are using this to some extent. Those who have begun using, great. Those who are going to use, please make this session uh, most fruitful for you. So it becomes a pertinent topic for our discussion today. Uh, I hope this talk would enable you to plan, uh, you know, things better for the next academic year. You will be able to understand what is the need of uh, AIL, Art Integrated Learning. You will be able to also understand how AIL, uh, you know, works as a tool, academic tool, a pedagogical tool for impactful teaching learning processes in the classroom so that, you know, the learning becomes experiential for children. So basically, we are going to discuss about why, what and how of AIL today. Uh, how part we'll discuss less, but why and how, why and what I'll be focusing majorly on. So why AIL? Why do we need art integrated learning? So we need art integrated learning because it is a tool to teach other subjects. You understand from the name itself. Uh, here, art gets integrated with other subjects and it, it acts as a medium. It acts as a tool for the learning process to understand the core subject that we are dealing with. Now, as per the guidelines of NCF, National Curriculum Framework 2005, as originally as well, art has always been treated as extracurricular. You all would agree with that. So it has always been art education. You might have heard this terminology all your life, art education. Art has always kept aside. However, soon it has been realized that art should be brought in, you know, brought squarely into the domain of curricular. It cannot be left aside. There, there, it has to be used as a medium or a tool to teach the uh, main core subjects. So, uh, you know, it, it has been advised that every time, whenever you teach up to class 10, use this medium as, uh, you know, so that children become enabled. You, you know, you help them, you uh, allow them to be themselves. So the big idea is it should, it should serve as a medium for the impactful learning process that can happen by providing the right resources, the right environment. Emphasis has been laid, you know, you see on the slide itself, the emphasis has been laid on learning rather than teaching. The learning, so how do you enable that learning process? The learning process will be enabled through the teaching approach. The teaching approach should be participatory, interactive, experiential, and I would say rather ins not instructive. I mean, in place of being instructive, it has to be more of participatory, interactive and experiential so that it can be applied and demonstrated by the children in their real life situations. It is very, very obvious. Now, point to note here is it is very obvious that when students are making or creating things that incorporate content from other subject areas, they are better able to integrate and retain the knowledge they are learning for a longer period of time. So it's, it's just that when you mix two things in a, in a beautiful way, the impact will be better. So the learning will be lifelong. The learning will be more, uh, uh, you know, un understood, more clear. Another key role, another key goal of integrating the arts with the other subject was to reinforce specific skills. We want our children to learn these skills as well and the content across all these subjects including art, of course. So 
some art integrated activities some hands on activities are uh, helpful to enable children to become 21st century learners we have already dealt with this topic before so children become competency you know children become competent and we enable competency based learning for them we create an environment for them uh, so you all are aware of competency based learning coming to the final point of um, you know this most importantly that you see here is to imbibe indian ethos through this integration why is this been advised because as per nep also it has been advised that indian ethos through this integration of indian art and culture should be there so those values should be learned by the children so this is why these are certain uh, certain uh, reasons why art integration is necessary for all of us to adapt to now how students benefit from this important part is that for us we know okay this is something which is beneficial now and we want to enable them but how does it help them the the core learners so uh, let us explore this in detail the key benefits from the perspective of the children who are learning from this unique approach isn't it a unique approach one it attempts to reduce the burden of learning children feel you know it's it's easy going they learn through the various art mediums number two you know it encourages the art based inquiry and investigation in them and also promotes the the very important c which is a, a one of the 21st century skill critical thinking and a life skill problem solving so this will also get promoted with these kind of uh, exercises it overall helps in the communication skills of the children as well and builds on their confidence level and self esteem and uh, since i talked about uh, uh, you know the ethos uh, on the on the last point on the previous slide it also enhances the aesthetic sense of the children that is our second last point on this slide enhances the aesthetic sense of the children and it encourages holistic development of children so all round development is also necessary this is why student benefit this is how student benefits from art integrated learning let me tell you how i mean give, let me give you one example on this uh, uh, context uh, one chemistry example to share when children want to learn about uh, each element right you know elements in chemistry so they do it through so as a teacher what i do is i integrate poetry with chemistry right so i pick up uh, something like haiku which is uh it's a unique haiku elemental haiku method given by a scientist called uh, mary soon lee and i have adapted this method now and i want my children to learn uh the elements through this particular method you can google search this it's easily available basically it's a traditional form of poetry uh, in japan which consists of 17 syllables uh well internet is flooded with all this information and i would want to, you know i would want that if in case subject matter experts can get into it the teachers can get into it they'll be easily able to integrate these two topics and it becomes interesting for children this kind of integration will also help in promoting critical thinking and problem solving amongst children it will in turn encourage their creative thinking as well isn't it and their inquiry they they become inquiry based learners so they start learning and they start enjoying the process of learning that's the idea another example on this on the slide is children themselves become elements of chemistry and enact so that's also part of art right they learn about reactions and they learn about compounds in chemistry and so they become themselves the element and uh, you know i want to be x element of of a choice and the other child becomes another element of a choice so they can they so elements mingle and do not mingle as per the as per the uh, methodology uh, we need we need to teach them which elements mingle and which elements do not mingle with each other so then they enact to mingle with each other or not mingle with each other so this is how they learn so this is another form of art which is theatrical art uh, we are introducing we are adding into uh, their learning process so there are many many more examples that can be taken in this in this context uh i would say that these examples are just a glimpse of art integrated learning process and how easily it connects the children with the real world they are connected with the real world very easily in this way uh, they have a better understanding of the of their surroundings as well coming to the second part of our discussion which is art integrated learning now that we have understanding of why it is needed 
let us understand what is it required? What is it that, uh, you know, what is art integrated learning and how is it acting as a tool, a pedagogical tool for experiential learning process? In fact, I'd like to give you one insight before I move, move on to the next part of discussion. Uh, I'd like to tell, inf inform you that uh, national, um, you know, NCRT, National Council for Education Research and Training, they have also formulated uh, some guidelines, comprehensive guidelines and a framework for the integration process. You can read that, uh, it's available on their website. Uh, so they also provide a couple of tools and you can research those tools on the website. How can this be used as a pedagogical tool for the children for the I mean for the classrooms so to well understand this process first we should know how is it not only art education so what is art education and what is art integrated education what is art as curriculum what is art integrated curriculum there is a difference right we talked about it in the beginning art as curriculum means art education only purely there is a class of art going on that's art education art integrated curriculum is art and education are mixed together here in uh, art is taught for the sake of art only but here art acts as a tool to teach other subjects and it meets the learning objectives of art as a subject uh, remember this point for your knowledge that uh, all the time whenever we define the learning objectives before planning the lesson plans uh, we define now the learning object integrated with the art so you know it the uniqueness uh, automatically comes there is a different objective now that we want both art and other subject to be learned by that particular plan. So there is a myth also. I'd like to talk about this myth now. This myth is, this misconception is that it's a replacement of art education. Now that there is a fair understanding, but when it was introduced, this was confusing for all of us. Without teaching, understanding, gaining any prior knowledge of art, one cannot think of integrating. Okay, so one should not remember, one should not know uh, theater uh, as a major skill, but they can still have an understanding of that. So that myth is no more there. You should, you should have, you should have very little knowledge also, but then also you are able to integrate it. The children are able to pick up your plans if you plan those well. So there is no background knowledge required for art, even if you are first time learner for the same. So AIL is an approach to teaching in which students construct and demonstrate understanding through an art form, right? And we all know that students engage in a creative process which connects an art form and other subjects and meet evolving subjects in both. So this is one of the interesting slide which came up to me and I wanted to share with all of you. Another example on the screen you see is a math, uh, you know, this is a planetary uh, travel brochure, basically. Children are, uh, you know, designing a brochure now and then they are getting into, uh, you know, talking, communication, and then they are researching from internet. So students create this as per their choice using basic elements of the visual arts. So I have so far talked about uh, uh, one form of art. Now, now I'm talking about another form of art. So there are different forms of art, right? We should all know that there are different, different forms of art. Let us understand what are the different forms of art. There are four major spheres of art. One, visual arts. Two, theater. Three, dance. And then is music. So these are all different and these, call, these can be definitely devised in our, uh, you know, used in our lesson plans in the most constructive manner. And there are such certain methodologies also, certain processes also, which can be taken into consideration. So uh, I would say that, you know, these forms, again, this depends on what, whichever teacher is available for you. Uh, suppose you have a visual art teacher available with you and she's there to help. So you can always extend your lesson plan and include visual art component. We have so far talked about one visual art example, and we have also talked about one theatrical example, but you can also choose dance and music in your classroom. With small children, it really works the best. I think 90% of small children pre-primary classrooms should be art integrated classrooms. Uh, that's a small piece of information. Now, this particular, you know, how do we do it? Now, important is how we incorporate this where do we get all this information? By now we have seen these examples, but we do not know how to do it. So there is first way, which is hands-on activities we can plan. 
The second way to do is we can use various projects, the art integrated projects, which are different from the activities. Then we can also choose certain assignments. This is another way of integrating art. And then largely is your lesson plan. Include it in your plan itself, learning plan itself, right? Activities which are incorporated in your learning plan. So all this information is very easily available on the website of, of uh, CBSC board and other, um, you know, other boards as well. Uh, however, I'd like to give you a quick glimpse. Uh, I would not like to go into detail. So primary, uh, so primarily to introduce art integrated learning, these projects I have been introduced. At least one art integrated project is taken up in each subject by all the students of classes 9 and 10 from academic session 2021 and in the current session as well. And at least one such topic, one such project of transdisciplinary nature, which is across various disciplines, is to be taken by students of classes 1 to 8. That has been advised by one of the boards, the CBSE board. Uh, it can include more than uh, one subject as well. Now, AIP, what is AIP? AIP is, an, uh, is in alignment with AIL. AIL is Art Integrated Learning, AIP is Art Integrated Project. So whenever you think about that, you, you talk about this project basically. These are used for the internal assessment by the teacher. And what are the various processes, procedures of AIP? Uh, well, project to be done has to be in groups of four to five students each. Uh, it shouldn't be too pro-art. I mean, what is pro-art basically? So we are basically using art as a medium here, art as a tool here. So we don't want them to become pro art and, you know, their focus should not divert. They should not feel that, you know, we have to make a drawing drawing itself. No, largely it is about drawing. Let's say if you want to figure out your emotions and you want to portray your emotions on the, uh, on the, on the piece of paper. So now the idea is to portray the emotions and not a beautification uh, of the art. We are not, uh, we are not uh, judging them or assessing them on the art itself. So they should not be focusing on too pro art. It means it should be a simple project, easily doable. No intervention of art teachers directly. I mean, that's up to you, your choice, but you can always make sure that you take the initiative as a main course subject teacher. And you know, you or your school teachers basically, uh, dependent on the kind of audience that we have, but subject matter teachers must plan along with them and discuss the projects in advance. New topics should be explored for more creativity. You should not have same, same things repeated. Eco-friendly material is also advised and resources should be used, which are readily available. Sh students should not feel difficult, you know, find it difficult to arrange the resources. So as you. So in minimum one project work of students from class 1 to 10, it is mandatory to indicate uh, integrate any art from the uh, paired state uh, UT. I mean, you can uh, go through this in detail. You will understand this as defined under Ek Bharat Shreshta Bharat. This is again as per CBSE board, but different boards have different mechanisms. Please refer to the below link for pairing states for this particular initiative. Now, important is you know about the AIL, you know about uh, AIPs also now, you are, you've got understanding about AIL being used as a pedagogical tool. What are the various assessment techniques to be followed? Now the assessment techniques which are to be designed to assess these kind of projects or, uh, you know, uh, assignments is has to be relevant to the content. Those have to be age, age appropriate, completely age appropriate. You can't just uh, create difficult assessments for them. Uh, and wherein, you know, you are you're, uh, taking them learn something different. You know, the criteria of assessment rubric has to be collectively planned, which means along with the art teacher, and maximum marks are to be informed before commencements of the project. That's also been advised to create a good assessment technique for such art integrated projects or art integrated assessments. Now, the easiest way, the, this is very important thing I'd like to tell you before we exit, the four step process that we follow, selection of a topic or a theme or a drawing based on the previous knowledge of the children. So I mentioned that we, we don't want them to be pro art. Number one, we also do not want children to, uh, to have a major prior knowledge about that art form. But we are talking about when we choose a topic or a theme or a drawing, 
based on some understanding, some uh, prior understanding about you know how it can function, so that you just facilitate the process and you don't have to just drive drive it completely. It is a smooth transaction for all of you. Number two, step two is to provide creative inquiry opportunity for hands-on tasks. So make sure your lesson plan is such that you th there is a room of creative inquiry into that. You know there there are enough questions which are uh, planned and hands-on task activity projects so that children have first-hand experience of that particular uh, learn, learning experience. Now they should not they should not uh, uh, just see teacher doing it. But teacher should involve them, the facilitator should involve them doing it. That is when it becomes experiential learning, isn't it? And assessment of both the subject and the art, very important step teachers and facilitators and the school leaders. Assessment of both the subject and the art has to be done in the third step. Do not forget that we are also evaluating them on both the subject areas. Step four, reflection on the new learning of the subject using an art form. Don't stop there at the step three. Mostly I've seen when we, you know, visit schools in general, they, the assessment finishes and everything is over, but also allow opportunities to, for children to reflect on the new learning of the subject through that art form. Let's say if that art form was not present in that particular plan, how would that learning be? Now learning would have been different in absence of an art form and now we have integrated. So how is it different? That reflection is also very, very important. So as I mean, I mean, as a facilitator, we need to encourage that kind of an inquiry uh, driven process. So having said that, I think we know how to now we understand the processes. So quickly, we'll take you to quick key components. Summary of the lesson is important, right? Students should be able to use images, colors to create their self portrait. Let's say this is one of the examples. They will be able to fill their portrait with pictures or drawings or objects. Of their interest so you can define your lesson plan as per your need in the classroom so this is one of the way i have written but you can choose another way as well key uh, concept again summary is to how do you do it right now key concept is which art form is being used so for example visual art reading and writing these are the three things today i am taking in a lesson plan so children will learn about self-portraits and how to use colors on their artwork this is the visual art component. Number two, reading. They will be able to view each other's portrait and read about their life, right? So we are asking them also to read about each other's life while they are creating these self-portraits. And writing, they also get a, get a chance to write short paragraph related to the self-portrait. So a quick lesson plan glimpse I'm sharing with you. So for a beautiful art integrated lesson, uh, you should remember learning objectives, what are those? Those have to be in lines with objectives of the main, main subject as well as the art subject. I wouldn't say main subject, but one subject along with the art subject. Then the activity or the project which is being taken, AIP, assessment criteria, the rubric has to be defined, and finally the reflection task. So these are few things which are to be remembered by all of you. And that brings me to... Uh, yeah, I already shared this pre-primary years of learning need more focus like drawing, painting, clay modeling, singing, all that, you know, all these movements, all these kind of art forms and 90% of the curriculum at this stage must be art integrated. So on this note, I would like to close the discussion and I would want you to come up with any questions that you have right now or you, I mean, the forum is open. Uh, Praveena, ma'am, over to you. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. So thanks for sharing your uh, email address too, so that like if anybody wants to reach uh, out to you later also, they can send their questions to you. Sure. So uh, it's a very informational uh, topic, very, very, very good session. So we have some questions lined up, though you have explained about the difference between the learning arts and art integrated learning. You have shared a website for the parents. You have uh, covered all the steps and everything. Uh, you might find a couple of questions repetitive, but uh, since they're posted, I have to read out to them. No problem. But, Please go ahead. Right. The first question is, what made you take an interest in this education topic? Oh, that's an interesting question to answer. So when I was asked by uh, the representative of uh, school reformer that I have to choose a topic, I listed down a couple of topics, but I thought this will be, you know, one NEP 
but nep everybody has a know how now so the second top most important topic was ai l because i felt it's there is a need for all the educators of the country to understand well about this topic because there is still a doubt there is still a, a dilemma in teacher in, in leaders mind as well as to how do we really integrate it and what is the uh, what are the nuances of it so it was close to me i worked on this i keep researching on educational topics so i thought this was the need of the hour as well yeah that is yeah, that you even uh, posted the slide like uh, when it was uh, made it made mandatory in 2020 so that's yes. good information Yes. So, what exactly does art integrated learning mean? You have explained it, but I'm re uh, reading the question to you again. Sure, sure. So, art integrated learning actually means that you are not dealing with uh, one subject. Number one, let me try to explain it in the most simplest manner. We are not dealing it with one subject right now. We are dealing with more than one subject, which is one. The let's say we are talking about English, and the other subject will be art. we are since integrating art with the other subject to make the learning more engaging to make the learning more experiential for children to make the learning more hands on for children that is why we are so we are amalgamating two different subjects and we are now not treating art as simply a art education which used to be earlier post 2020 uh, after post the circulars uh, though we have already been doing many many schools were already following this way but this was made a mandate so that now all those four spheres of art uh, that i talked about should be majorly included in certain projects at least so that children have a better understanding of their their uh, learning journey you know their learning journey should be engaging smooth and easy going for them it should be a better retention for them that is why art so this is this is what art integration means and it is important in this particular context okay i guess uh, in the uh, pre primary uh, sessions i think uh, these were already implemented right uh, the, to improve the to check the motor skills of the children so, and all that yeah it's more of you know in pre primary there are more areas more uh, uh, you know already awareness is there and pre primary teachers and school leaders are already following those practices but again you need to move from road to experience even in the senior grades we are not right. confining right. to pre primary only but it is still class 10th which is made mandatory right the montessori education is uh, based on uh, most of uh, uh, you know the art integrated learning in my understanding you're very right ma'am already and that is where i i brought this point twice on my discussion on my talk that uh, 90% of the curriculum in the montessori or pre primary years of learning has to be and it is integrated with art various art forms yes ma'am yeah. so what are the outcomes expected when ail takes place okay that's again a very interesting question the outcomes expected are directly proportional to the learner right we want so why are we doing all this process why are we even having this kind of a talk why are we having these kind of discussions the primary uh, objective is to get to get our learner uh, you know it to make it learner centric the process has to be learner centric so the outcome will be straight away proportional to the to the to the students who will have a better learning journey who will have a, you know who will have a, a straight experience of understanding the process they will move from road to experience as i mentioned they will not have just mugging up the concept but they would enjoy because uh, you see otherwise if art is taught to them many you would agree that many student may not find art as an interesting subject i mean i remember i used to be quite an average and uh, i'm i'm sure everyone can relate to that but when you when all of you have to do it in a class one thing then you your interest also gets developed so i believe their straight outcome is academic excellence of the main subject number one and the second outcome will be interest in that art form also will develop and you never know next in uh, in the years to come maybe you know i take up that as a profession as a child so these are the two important outcomes that i feel which we try to bring out from this kind of learning process right ma'am so do you think in this existing pedagogy ail is not happening uh partially ma'am in the existing pedagogy uh yeah i mean it's been two years uh, some of the schools are doing it completely some of the schools are just beginning to do 
so i would say we are somewhere in the middle you know uh, we are not zero we are not uh, we have, i wouldn't say that we have haven't begun we have begun but we are somewhere in the middle and we have a long way to go and this is why the awareness is needed and this is why a uh, more uh, information uh, uh, ac acquisition is required through self learning as well as through the sessions that we plan for our schools right so this question is again related to the previous one society so, is obsessed with passing university entrance exams do you think there is patience and space for serious ail ma could you repeat the question for my help ma okay it says society is obsessed with passing university entrance exams do you think there is patience and space for serious ail ah uh, lovely question um so number one the society is us right we are society so if we change yeah. our mindset society society's passion changes then you know so i believe that you know if we generalize this it will become difficult for all of us to understand so let us change our mindsets as a society as a community and we should not focus just on passing the exams or clearing with good marks because that brings down the confidence level of the children as well yes there is a room of improvement yes there is a room of uh, uh, incorporation of such strategies only when we change the outlook completely and only when we we divert our focus from currently unfortunately as the question has also been posed like that and i know i can relate to that question unfortunately largely la a large number of people only make society right now that is a perception that perception changes the ball changes the complete game changes mm -hmm. so we are the people who can change it and yes it is possible it is very much doable and it's all in our hands to transform the lives of the children right so uh you said like it has been made mandatory and everything and some schools are uh, have implemented some schools are uh you know trying to what can school heads to create awareness what can school heads do to create awareness among the staff about ail first of all they should know themselves as a first step if you know it then you will be able to uh, you know pass on your learning to the team then you should definitely as a school head i would say that you will the first important objective should be to pass on this information that you have to your school leaders and make it a mandate in the school itself that minimum uh, uh minimum in a week we will have uh, you know one lesson plan or two lesson plans uh, imbibed in such a way that you know we will be able to reach to the final goal i am not saying each each plan each learning plan has to be art integrated again you can devise your own ways because there is no such mandate of number of plans to be taught but you will have to simply understand if as a school head you realize the importance of it you make certain procedures in the schools which are to be followed by your teachers and they look up to you so when you when you set some standards then the standards will be followed by your team right so this is what my recommendation to the school leaders first understand the process for themselves then make it mandatory or rather i would say uh, you know compulsory is an easy word here compulsory for some plans minimum two in a week or minimum one in a week whatever whatever uh, period, uh, frequency you want to decide or minimum one in 15 days right across two subjects so that discipline has to be brought in the school by the school leader okay so talking about the stem subjects ma'am how can ail be introduced in these subjects is is there any scope if at all we can introduce definitely i mean i think in all the subjects i'm not only talking about so i talked about one of the stem subjects so chemistry also is a part of it right right so yes you can do that i've given two examples yeah right. 100% all the subjects are are to be and can be easily clubbed with art i feel that you know even if today i am talking to you i have used visual art as a mode for you to understand i could do away with the ppt i could have just chosen my own uh, discussion but it wouldn't have been very interesting for all of you to listen to me completely for a longer period of time so i have chosen visual art as one of the mode for all of you so as adults also we we are 
you know we have multiple intelligences so i think all subjects can be integrated with art in a very beautiful way dependent on how much research you put into it okay. and how much energy that we have uh, and patience that we have uh, for uh, doing this uh, taking this as a mission right so you have given a couple of examples also so what are some challenges you have faced while implementing this ail um the challenge is not in the planning i would say sometimes the challenges come what i've seen is challenges generally appear at the time of implementation so when you plan sir certain things well and you you know the nuances of it then if you get into this at the time of execution even if a simple lesson plan without art can can uh, you know uh, take us to some difficult challenges while we are executing so even if we in include it with art form and we integrate it and we have similar kind of challenges in the classrooms i think the teachers are good to uh, um, you know we can redo the lesson also even if there is a problem executing at one point in time let's say i asked the children to make a travel brochure and they were not able to reach out to the proper outcomes that i have expected for them i'm sure that i have another chance i will do it in a different way as a teacher as a facilitator so uh, the generally there is no planning level challenges but there are certain implementation level challenges of minor nature in okay. my opinion in my understanding okay uh you have spoken so much about ail like as an art and everything but i don't think uh, it is related to indian art but the question is like this just to be clear does ail mean learning about indian art does it have any ideological angle here uh no not necessarily nep definitely focuses on indian art values but you can bring in like i i also chose an example of japanese art form right, right. so it not it is not necessary to be an indian art form for sure you can you can bring the world's art forms as well and help them because you know we are we are global right we are making them global 21st century learners competents so we cannot uh, just confine our um, knowledge system to only our country's art forms learning because tomorrow when they enter into the competitive world they should also have an understanding with they there is a cross cultural exchanges also that we do in the schools right why do we do that only to understand each other's culture so this is my quick answer to this is that to this kind of a question is that no it is not only indian art form but all art forms all all global art forms okay yeah so one question here so how do you integrate AIL uh, for students with special needs, ma'am. Hmm. Uh, depending on what kind, so we have to all aim to have our classrooms as inclusive classrooms. Yeah. Whenever we teach, we as a teacher, as a school leader, are uh, you know definitely we may have some uh, special children in the school in the class. So the level has to be different. We have to differentiate. so there are certain differentiation techniques right that we follow when we teach them so we'll have to make sure that you know we differentiate at that level at their level however we definitely include the uh, same art form or the nearest possible easiest art form which is possible so we give them easier tasks uh, of assessments however we, they should not be given uh, i mean they should not be discriminated of uh, uh, the process in the learning you know i i understand you know where is this question coming from there are certain limitations of the special education children special uh, learners so you have to be wise enough uh, to choose a topic relevant for them and make sure they are in, there is an inclusiveness in the classroom yeah but you can definitely uh, play upon the assessment part here you can definitely help them to go through the process of learning with them with all of them together but at the time of assessment you give them that leverage that edge over others sure. thanks a lot ma'am that's the that uh, is the end of the question answer round school journal of education and school reformer.com thank you for the talk and for patiently answering all the questions we also thank the audience for participating in the event ma'am we will end the session now
Thank you so much for your time as well. Thank you for everyone for listening. Thank you.